parallel beam of light in air makes an angle of 41 degrees with the surface of a glass plate having a reflective an index or a fraction of 1.6. What is the angle between the reflected part of the beam and the surface of the glass? What is the angle between the refracted beam and the surface of the beam? Oh, reflected and refracted. All right, so that's the key point we're going to go for here. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture because as I start pretty much every physics problem, we have glass. So I'll do glass index or a fraction is 1.6. We're going to have air up here. Uh, the index or a fraction of air is assumed to be the same as vacuum. It's like a whole bunch of zeros followed by like a three or something. So about one. And yes, so we have light and it's going to come in like this. It's going to have an angle. So it says specifically 41 degrees with the surface. Now that when we're talking about Snell's law and refraction and reflection, that's not what we care about. We care about the ang this angle with respect to the normal. So first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to convert that to um, the complementary. I think it's complementary. So it'd be 90 minus 41. So we have 49 degrees. 49 degrees, light then bends down this way at some other angle. We're gonna call this theta two. And what's also going to happen is light is going to both reflect and refract. So some of the light will reflect, some of it will refract. Now, not necessarily all of it will refract. You have um, something called, we'll probably address at some point, called internal complete internal reflection, which means that just because there's a portion that reflects, reflects and a portion that refracts, bends, that portion can be zero. So don't don't assume that it always has to be some amount that's non-zero. All right, game face, game face, focus. What is the angle being reflected? Uh, what is the angle between the reflected? So angle of incidence is the angle of reflection. And so 41, 49, 49, 41. So what is the angle between the reflected part of the beam and the surface of the glass? Easy, 41 degrees. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So that's supposed to be 41 degrees, not 141. So angle comes in at 41, leaves at 41 with respect to the surface, or 49, 49 with respect to the normal. All right, what is the angle between the refracted beam and the surface of the glass? All right, what is the angle between the refracted beam and the surface of the glass? All right, so they're asking for, I'm gonna call this angle just normal theta. This will be theta two, this will be Theta, the one that th theta they're looking for right here. All right, so what we really want to do is find theta two. So to do that, we're going to do Snell's law. N one sine of theta one equals N two sine of theta two. We want to find theta two. So theta two is going to be N one sine theta one over um, N two. And then, since we want to get rid of this sine right here, we'll do arc sine. There we go. So to clean this up a little bit, N1 up here is gonna be one. So it's gonna be arc sine of one times the sine of 49 degrees, because we wanna use the angle with respect to the normal over n2 which is 1.6 so I do that in the calculator on I'm just going to ignore the 1 because 1 times the number is going to be the same number so I'll do sine of 49 divided by 1.6 second arc sine inverse sine of second answer and we're in degrees so this should give us 28.1 equals 28.1 and that's going to be degrees um, that's this in t this with respect to the normal. So then I'm going to say that 90 minus theta two is going to equal theta, this theta that we're looking for. So I'll do 90 minus second answer, and that gives us about I'm going to call it 62. 
62 degrees. So the angle they're looking for is 62 degrees. All right, so the idea with this problem to kind of recap is angle of incidence equals angle of reflection and Snell's law, which is Snell's law, N1 sine of theta one equals N2 sine of theta two where N is the index refraction and index refraction is um, this, so you have the speed of light in a medium is speed of light divided by the index refraction. So it's basically how much slower than light in the medium that the light is moving. And then the other thing is with Snell's law, you have to know that you're dealing with the angle with respect to the normal, not the angle with respect to the surface. So that's the key idea there. That's what makes that harder than necessary. All right, game face, shown a figure. A layer of water covers a slab of material X, mystery value X. In a beaker, ray light travels upwards, follows the path indicated. Okay, the direction of the light flow is irrelevant. All the math would be exactly the same. Here's the information on the figure. Find the index refraction of the material, mystery X. Find the angle when it goes to the light. All right, so I'm gonna start with the bottom here. This will be theta one. This will be theta two. And then when it bends again, I'm gonna do another bending like this. This will be theta three. So we have one, two, three angles. We're gonna use Snell's law. So we're gonna do N1 sine of theta one equals N2 sine of theta two, which we can also throw in N3 sine of theta three. So I can, we can just add on as many of those as we want. So now, First thing we want to do is we want to find N1. N1 equals question mark, they don't give it to us. Now the hard part about this problem is they don't tell us N2, so this is medium two right here. You're expected to know it. And that's not really fair, but life isn't fair, so it's kind of par for course. Um, so the index refraction N2 of water is just 1.33. It's like, how do we know that? Is that always water? What if it's salty water? What if it's warm water? We're just calling it 1.33, 1.34, whatever, sort of. But you're right though. There is some nuance here that's just kind of glossed over. We're gonna go with that. So we wanna find N2. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, do we wanna find, do we need? Um, so here, I'm also, this is, ooh, so this is gonna be theta two up here, and this is gonna be a different, uh, actually I'm gonna call this, so I'm gonna change things around a little bit. I'm gonna call this theta four, uh, theta three, and up here theta four. I know I'm kinda of changing halfway through, I should not change horses midstream, it happens. All right. So let's see, what do, what do we need here? So we have this angle, that angle. Do we need to know? Maybe. Hmm. So, okay, so we're trying to find, um, Information, find the index refraction, find angle. Okay, so to, so we're gonna start by finding the um, N1. That's our first part, part one question. So I'm just gonna take Snell's law, theta one, theta two, rearrange this for N1. N1 equals N2 sine of theta two all over sine of theta one. So theta one, we know, since we want the angle with respect to the normal, is going to be 25 degrees because 90 minus 65 is, 90 minus 65 is 25. So this is gonna be 1.33 times sine of 48 degrees all over sine of um, 25 degrees. Yes, and so put that in the calculator on 1.33 times sine of 48, close parentheses, divided by quantity sine 
of 25 degrees. Close parentheses, close parentheses. That should give us a number, 2.34. 2.34, and that's gonna be the index for a fraction of x. So index for a fraction of x is 2.34. All right, then the next problem, and it feels like this is gonna be a completely separate problem, which is okay. Um, part B, and this is for, they say, they call it phi, Find the angle that light makes with the normal in the air. So that's going to be theta 4. So I'm just going to start by saying theta 4 equals oh, theta erg. Theta 4 equals phi, just to say that that's what, and that's what they're looking for. Minimize confusion, but still use the va the um, variables that I, I want and I feel comfortable for it. Okay, N3 sine of theta 3 equals n4 sine of theta 4. So for this, n3 and n2 are the same thing. We want to find theta 4. So theta 4, which we know is phi, that symbol there, is going to equal n3, we'll do it, n3 sine of theta 3 all over n4, and then to get rid of this sign, we're going to do arc sine, which some people like to use the little um, negative 1 um, I just prefer arc sine because that way you don't get confusion because sometimes negative one is like, oh, negative one exponent, one over. It's like, no, that's not what we want here. Um, put in some numbers. This becomes arc sine of N3. We just is water, so that's 1.33. The angle we want is respect to the normal. So that's going to be, um, what did we say that was? That's going to be same as theta two yes is it yes it's gonna be the same so when you have two parallel lines and they're crossing like this this angle right here is gonna be the same as that angle right there so that's gonna be 48 degrees divided by n4 and since n4 is air we just know assume that it's going to be um, one. The index refraction of air is about the same as index refraction of vacuum, which is one. All right, so we're gonna do arc sine. Uh, no, I'm just gonna do 1.33 times sine of 48. Then we're gonna do the inverse sine of second answer. This is gonna give us a big number, 81, yes. 81, 81 degrees. So theta four, which is the same as phi, is 81 degrees. So, and that's why, and it kind of makes sense because the way I drew it. So 81 degrees, and um, the mnemonic I learned for how to bend it is that light is lazy, so it's gonna bend towards the slower medium. So this is, uh, the higher the index refraction, the slower light is in that medium. And so you can see that this time the light bends towards 2.34 because it's slower. And then once it gets to the air, it's going to bend again towards the water because the water is slower. So it gets more and more, I guess, horizontal. So not too bad. The idea of this one is just Snell's law and using it through multiple iterations. Um, the concept isn't too tough, but it's easy to get mixed up. Make sure you use the angle that is with respect to the normal, not the surface. That's kind of key. And that's how you approach this problem. Hope it helped. See you next time.